my dividend investing portfolio allows me to sleep well at night. So I wake up in the morning, I log into my brokerage account, and boom, it's been another successful week of investing. Now this is what happens to other investors. They log into their brokerage account in the morning and they've lost money in their investment. So my dividend investing portfolio is built based on stability, looking at the 11 sectors in the stock market. Now, when you look at the 11 sectors in the stock market, each has its own risk level. So you want to create a portfolio based on weight, weight by sector, which I will link. This is what my weight looks like by sector. Let's say I had $10,000 to invest. 20% or $2,000 would go to companies that are in the consumer staples category. 18% or $1,800 would go to companies that are in the category of consumer discretionary. And the list goes on and on. Now, the reason why I have it set up like this has everything to do with how volatile the companies are that I'm investing in and how safe their dividend is, even in a stock market crash. The companies that I invest in in the consumer staple sector, they pay an increasing dividend even in a stock market downturn. Now, if you look at my list and you go further down, you'll see that information technology is not that high up on my list. That's because most information technology companies don't pay a dividend. Of course, there are exceptions like Microsoft and Apple, but most information technology companies, they're focused on growth. And these are also companies that are extremely volatile. So they go up fast when you look at their stock price on the stock market. But in an economic downturn or a crash, they also dip down the fastest. Now, I mentioned that there are 11 sectors in the stock market. But when you look at my list, you'll see that I have financials and real estate combined. That's because when I created my list, there was no real estate sector. Now, let's take a look at the weight by sector when it comes to the S&P 500. If you take a look at this weight by sector, you can see that information technology makes up almost 26% of the S&P 500's weight. So let's say you're investing in an index fund. This is what your allocation will look like when it comes to the weight by sector. Now, this is way too aggressive for me, the number one. 26% because I have information technology at 6%. Now, am I telling you not to invest in the S&P 500 index fund? Of course not. I'm investing in an index fund that tracks the S&P 500. The one that I'm investing is the one from Vanguard. What I am saying is that you need to pay attention to what you're investing in, even when it comes to weight by sector. Because if you look at this list, the information technology sector gets hit the hardest when it comes to an economic dip or an economic downturn. Another good tip for your dividend investing portfolio is to look at companies that are outside of your own country. So I'm in the US, so I usually invest in companies within the US because from a dividend standpoint, I've noticed that the best paying dividend paying companies and the companies that are the most consistent with increasing their dividend are in the US. But that doesn't mean that there aren't other countries that also have great dividend paying companies. Some of the other different countries that you can take a look at when it comes to dividend paying companies are of course Brazil, South Africa, China. Just do some research online, use a stock screener and you'll be able to find some good ones out there. One great company that just popped up in my mind is Unilever. Now this company is headquartered in the UK. but the biggest brand that I know that they own is Ben & Jerry's. Unilever also pays a healthy dividend, which they've been able to grow year after year consistently. Now, one thing that I do have to mention when it comes to your dividend investing portfolio is that you don't want to be so rigid in your investing style that you don't have fun when it comes to investing. Too many rules will take the fun out of investing. So what I'm pretty much saying is that if there is an investment out there that you think will do good, go ahead and try it out. Like for example, I tried investing in Bitcoin and Litecoin a couple of years ago. Now, that is outside of my investing style, but I still wanna have fun when it comes to investing. You never wanna be so rigid that you will only stick to one investing style. That being said, you do wanna look at your risk. So when I invested in Bitcoin and Litecoin, 
I just invested a small amount. I didn't take a large sum of money and invest it in Bitcoin and Litecoin, which is something that I'm not too familiar with. So yes, when it comes to investing, have your investing style, have your dividend investing portfolio, but also leave some room open to have some fun and invest in different types of securities that you think will do well in the future. Now let's go ahead and delve in a little bit deeper into those 11 sectors in the US stock market. Number one, consumer staples. This sector consists of products consumers use on an everyday basis. Even in an economic downturn, people will keep using these as they are always in demand. They consist of beverages, food products, household products, personal products, and tobacco products. So some examples of these companies are gonna be Procter & Gamble, Kimberly Clark, Estee Lauder, Pepsi, and Coca-Cola. So the reason why I have consumer staples at 20% when it comes to my dividend portfolio is because the companies in this category, like I mentioned, they have a competitive advantage. So even in an economic downturn, they perform well and they still pay the dividend because with a dividend portfolio, my focus is always on the dividend. The dividend needs to be stable and the dividend needs to grow every single year. Number two, consumer discretionary. These are the non-essential products or services that consumers could live without. If the economy is doing badly, people cut back on consumer discretionary products. They consist of media, auto components, hotels, cruises, restaurants, vacation resorts, apparel, and cars. Some examples of these types of companies are Disney, Yum Brands, McDonald's, Fastenal, and Walmart. So consumer discretionary is my number two when it comes to my dividend portfolio weight by sector. Now, even though I have them at number two, consumer discretionary companies, they perform on average worse than consumer staple companies when it comes to an economic downturn. The thing, however, is that many companies in this sector still have a competitive advantage. So even in a stock market downturn, they're able to bounce back faster than, for example, information technology companies because of their competitive advantage. Number three, energy. Energy companies consist of the production or supply of energy worldwide. For example, Kinder Morgan. The next one, healthcare. There are a variety of companies in the healthcare sector, such as drug manufacturers, biotechnology, healthcare providers and services, medical appliances and equipment, and medical research. People always require medical attention and medical aid, so this is a sector to always keep an eye on. Some of the companies in this sector are gonna be Johnson & Johnson, Abbott Laboratories, and even AbbVie. Now when I look at healthcare and I look at my weight by sector, I would like to push healthcare above financials and real estate. The only reason why I haven't done it though is because there aren't that many healthcare companies that hit all my qualifications. There are some like Abbott Laboratories and AbbVie and Pfizer, but I would need more in order to increase my weight by sector when it comes to healthcare. Financials. When you hear financials, you immediately think about banks, but this sector also consists of insurance, asset management, investment brokerages, and credit services. So some examples of these companies are gonna be Chubb, T. Rowe Price, and even Visa. And also real estate, which I have combined with financials. When you think about real estate, you always wanna look at REITs, which is Real Estate Investment Trust. Some of these companies are gonna be Realty Income, which is a monthly dividend paying company, and Omega Healthcare. Utilities. Companies in this sector mostly carry a large amount of debt. These are electric utilities, gas utilities, water utilities, and multi-utilities. These are often considered boring companies to invest in. Some examples are Avista Corporation, New Jersey Resources, and South Jersey Resources. When it comes to utility companies, I have them lower on my different strategy because they have a lot of debt and they have a high payout ratio. Two combinations for disaster. So if there's an economic downturn or economic trouble, they might not be able to keep paying a dividend. 
telecommunication services, also now called communications. Communication services companies have set up an elaborate infrastructure that gives us the ability to communicate with our family and friends all over the world. The biggest section is wireless communication. Two examples of companies in this sector are going to be AT&T and Verizon. I tend to stay away from companies that are in the material sector because these companies provide goods that are first of all highly cyclical and then also highly price sensitive meaning that the lowest price will always get the customer because they don't have a competitive advantage so they can only compete based on their price now some examples of companies in this sector are air products and chemicals chevron and exxon Mobil. industrial goods this sector also highly dependent on demand consists of different companies in different categories such as aerospace and defense airlines machinery construction railroads electrical equipment commercial supplies and services building products and industrial conglomerates some examples are ge emerson electric and dover and the last one information technology so many Companies in this specific sector are favorite companies of many investors because they are mostly growth stocks, of course. People also like being associated with the coolest tech companies that are creative and always push the limits of what is possible. Competition is extremely high in information technology and is not unusual to see today's cool companies be tomorrow's forgotten relics. Many tech companies also don't pay a dividend because they'd rather use the money to grow the company instead. The information technology sector consists of software, hardware, IT services, communication equipment, internet services, and semiconductors. Some examples are IBM, Qualcomm, Texas Instruments, and Cisco. As a value investor, I try to stay away from the information technology sector because of course most of the companies don't pay a dividend and then also it's hard to keep up with these companies because they're here today and then a year or two from now they're gone those are not the types of companies that i like to invest in if there are information technology companies that i invest in those are going to be your apple and your microsoft's just keep in mind that i don't have a favorite company that i invest in when i look at my dividend portfolio because if a company that I invested in, if they stop paying a dividend or they cut their dividend, I'm selling that company. So if you like this topic about investing or even dividend investing, make sure to check out my other videos.